Austin, Texas has been hyped as one of the best cities to live in for well over 10 years. That has helped to attract people from all over the country to move here. And that has turned Austin into one of the fastest growing cities in all of America. Stick around for this video and I'll give you some pros and cons about moving to Austin, Texas. According to the City of Austin website, there are over 38,000 private businesses in Austin. Some of the big names include Apple, Dell, IBM, Samsung, and most recently, Tesla. In fact, there are over 3,300 technology firms in Austin and over 100,000 technology workers. Now, the pro to this is all the opportunity it creates, not only for the people who are able to get those high-paying jobs, but for all the supporting businesses. The restaurants, the bars, the retail stores, the car dealership. They all have more people wanting to buy their products and services. Now the con, especially in the housing market, is all that additional demand has driven prices higher. Of course, affordable housing is relative to household income. If you're from San Francisco, you can buy two or three houses in Austin for the price of what you'd pay for one there. But if your household income is under $100,000, you're probably not gonna find a whole lot of options in those hip and trendy neighborhoods right outside the urban core. Now in Texas, the one thing there's plenty of is land. According to Treehugger, if the state of Texas was as dense as New York City, you could put the entire world's population inside the borders. That's right, the entire world, 6.9 billion people, would fit inside of Texas. Take a look at this graphic. Austin covers 271 square miles and has a population just under a million. If the density of Austin was the same as New York City, all those people would fit into 33 square miles, which is about 12% of its current size. And because of this availability of land, urban areas in Texas tend to sprawl out. Now the pro to this is just about anybody can buy a house in the Austin area. It's just that the lower the price point, the further out you're gonna to have to go. Now the con of this, of course, is if you have to buy a house 20 or 30 miles away from downtown and you have to commute every day, you're gonna to have to maintain a reliable car you're going to have to contend with traffic and congestion and probably have to deal with toll roads. Not to mention that you're going to be spending a good chunk of time inside your car driving back and forth to work. What happens if you take an interstate that was built 40 years ago at a time when the city planners were trying to prevent Austin from becoming a, another Houston or Dallas? You take that outdated highway system and double the number of cars on it, what do you think you're going to get? You're going to get a lot of bottlenecks and congestion. Now you can read about how bad the traffic is in Austin almost all over the internet. But what they don't tell you is a substantial investment that's been made over the course of the last 10 years to upgrade the highway system. Mopac was recently updated and added an express lane. 183, 45, 130, and portions of 290 have been expanded and converted to toll roads. Some of the projects that have been approved and funded include updates to 360 through the hill country and a complete overhaul of Interstate 35. There's also the Red Line commuter rail that runs from Leander to downtown, and the recent approval of the Project Connect means that additional rail lines connecting Maynard and Tech Ridge to South Austin and the airport are on the horizon. Now the pro to this is the city planners have finally accepted that growth is inevitable, and they're spending money on the highways, the toll roads, and the public transportation to meet the demand of the forecasted growth in population. The con is that Austin is not a small town anymore. It's currently the 11th largest city in the entire United States. With that many people and that many cars, you can expect some congestion. On a side note, anybody who complains about the traffic in Austin has probably never driven on a freeway in Los Angeles or tried to navigate New York City or Boston. Now it can occasionally get cold in Austin, and we're going to define cold as anything under freezing temperature. The good news is that any cold weather that comes is usually gone within a couple of days. On those rare occasions that it does snow, it's all melted within 24 to 48 hours. The most comfortable time of year is going to be the spring and the fall, when temperatures are going to hover in that 70 to 80 degree range and lows are going to be in the low to mid 60s. The spring can start as early as February or March and will pretty much be over by May. And once we move into the summer, those temperatures are going to move up into the upper 90s and oftentimes over 100. The hottest months are going to be July and August, and sometime in mid to late September, the weather will begin to break and you'll return to more comfortable temperatures. Now the pro to this is you're not going to have extended periods of cold weather like you will in the north, and you'll probably never have to shovel a driveway. You might actually be able to get through an entire winter with just a sweater and a light jacket. 
The con is when July and August roll around, you're going to be spending a lot of time inside the air conditioning, and you're probably going to wind up moving a lot of your outdoor activities to early in the morning or later in the evening. Now probably one of the things that Austin is best known for is the entertainment options. One of its nicknames is the live music capital of the world, and events like South by Southwest and the Austin City Limits Music Festival demonstrate why. With all the events that are held in Austin, there's an average of 20 million visitors every year. And that's just the average. In 2017, there were over 25 million visitors. For comparison, Rome gets 4.2 million, Hawaii 8.3, and London 17.4. Now, in the event that you don't like music, rest assured there are plenty of other options. There are miles and miles of bike trails and hundreds of acres of parks. One of the most famous is Zilker Park, which is just south of downtown. You can rent a kayak or a paddleboard on Ladybird Lake, try some mountain climbing on the limestone cliffs, or go for a swim in the Barton Springs pool. The pro, obviously, is there's plenty of things to do, regardless of the ages in your household. The only con I can think of is that as of yet, there is still not a professional sports team in Austin. We do have the Texas Longhorns, Formula One Racing, and in 2021, the Austin FC, a professional soccer team, will begin playing in the nearly completed stadium in North Austin. Well, I hope this is helpful. You know, I get emails, texts, and phone calls almost every day from people who are thinking about buying or selling real estate here in the Austin area, and I'd love to help you out too. If you like my videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. All of my contact information is in the video description, so don't be shy. Let's make your real estate dreams come true.